So step one is just to give him some backstory. I mean, my father and my mother-in-law are completely blue collar workers, right? Like salt of the earth, your, your, your quintessential blue collar workers. Between them, they had, you know, three daughters and, you know, live in Connecticut, which is not a cheap state to live in. And if you're blue collar and you have three daughters, all your money goes to housing, food and getting your kids what you need. Right. Which is totally great. So at the end of the day, in terms of investing capital, if my grandfather or if my father in law started this with more than two thousand dollars in his bank account, I'd probably be surprised, to be honest with you. And but he did have determination and he did have the ability to to learn and listen. So when we when we started, it was like, hey, I know there's a way. I don't have any money. How can I get this done? And first step that we did was we sat down and created a plan. Right? Here's where I'm at. Here's where I need to get to be. Let's fill in the in between. Right. And the, the where I'm at is I make about 50 to 60 thousand dollars a year in, in income. Right. That's where I'm at. That's what I need in order to be able to retire in the future. So I said, OK, that's the plan. How do we get from zero to sixty thousand dollars a year? And then from there, the next steps were looking at his market, making a determination on what are the best type of rental properties that we should be investing in. And then once we figured out those properties, which are three to four unit um, properties in Connecticut, once we figured out what the ideal rental property was, it's, hey, how many of those suckers do we have to buy in order to hit 60 grand a year? So we determined we have to buy about five to six of those and then we knew exactly how many we needed to purchase. And then it's just going out there and figuring out how to get those properties under contract and doing it with little to no money. That sounds a lot, Greg. Sounds a lot like your onboarding calls, right? Like you guys, you guys yep. go through this just like reverse engineering of where do you need to be? How do we create a buying plan? Even before you, you show anybody a property, you want to you wanna talk about that, Greg? Yeah, I'm just sitting back and just enjoying this because I've had the pleasure of helping people in my family go through the same process. And I know how it means so much. And I also know what it, how difficult it is being a younger guy and then helping out people in your family who are a lot older. So kudos to you, John. I mean, that's, that's really special what you've been able to do for your father-in-law. And Thanks, it does. It all starts with a plan. And, you know, many people there's just hurdles to being able to invest in rental properties that people have to, you know, help themselves get over. And, and the first one is just, you know, trying like getting yourself mentally ready to buy that property. And that's a really tough hurdle for people to get to many people. If they get there, they don't stop and say, okay, what's the ultimate goal? What's the ultimate plan? And that's where a lot of people fail. They run right in. If they can get up the courage and the, the resources to go ahead and start to invest in rental properties, They've got all these other naysayers out there who are telling them what they shouldn't be doing it and that they're going to be, you know, waking up in the middle of the night with their tenants calling them for a clogged toilet or whatever. You know, you've got all those naysayers. You put them to the side, you get to the point where you're going to buy rental properties, but you don't actually think about really important questions like why, why are we doing this? Right. We don't often think about how many we need to buy. We talk a lot about at JWB that, you know, the goal here is not for you to buy a thousand houses. The goal is for you to reach your passive income goal. And if you yep. reach that goal, then you don't need to buy any more houses if you don't want to, if your goals don't dictate it. And that's a great thing, right? But you never know that unless you actually go through the process that you, John, have just gone through in that, in that planning process. In fact, I think people would really like to kind of know a little bit more about that planning process, John. Could you kind of talk about specifically how you determined that, I think, was it five or six of those that he needed in his portfolio? Could you give people a little bit more insight into how you determined that? Yeah, for sure. So, you know... Connecticut's a very interesting real estate investment market. To be honest with you, I probably wouldn't recommend investing in Connecticut to really anyone. However, my father-in-law lived there and it just made life super easy. So that's why we invested there. And what we did was we started analyzing some properties, just like you do for all your clients, Greg. You know, it comes ready to rock and roll. But for us, we would go out, we would analyze single units, two families, three families, four families, to figure out what property gave us the best bang for our dollar in terms of cash flow versus cost or purchase price. And to us, it was that three to four family was the sweet spot. And what we did was we looked at those properties and said, hey, if we were to leverage into these properties, right? 
and we were to get a loan for 75 or 80 percent of the the actual value purchase price of the home what's my end cash flow going to be after i pay my mortgage my taxes my insurance my property management fee all of that and we determined that we could usually get about a thousand dollars a month in net cash flow on a three or four unit property after we paid all of the costs associated with it. So I knew of, hey, if I could get five to six of those from my father-in-law, he could go out and purchase those, then hey, we'd have that 60 grand a year. That's perfect. Yep, so that, that was the process in itself. And I, I just wanted to mention something you said, Greg, like about like the fear of, you know, what all could go wrong and whatnot. And I think the older we get, we become more fearful because we've experienced loss and failure, right? I think one of the biggest things that not only I saw as a success as, as a young person was I didn't know how much risk I was taking, right? I didn't know what all could go wrong. I didn't experience all those issues. I just went for it. And luckily more turned out better than not. And my father-in-law is kind of that same type of person. He's a kid at heart, like total kid at heart. And he's like, yeah, you know what? If it fails, guess what? It's another learning experience for me. And if it goes great, hell, I don't have to work anymore. And, and that was just like, it's just such a positive attitude and, you know, way to, to approach it. I'm always super impressed with people that learn something new late in life, right? Like I got a, one of my best friend's dad, like learned Japanese and is like seventies kind of thing. And I'm like, dude, that's incredible. Right. Like, yeah. like that, that ability to keep the mind elastic and keep evolving is, is, is definitely, definitely a key for happiness there. So let's talk about the other piece. So you figured out this is where he needs to be. Yep. You figured out that he needs this many assets of this type to get there. Mm -hmm. but he still had zero dollars in his bank account. How, yep. how did, how did he build up the capital in order to be able to invest or was it even building capital? How did he acquire these properties when he had no money in his bank account? Exactly. So in my mind, there's really two ways to do rental real estate, right? The way that we all want to do it, which I would prefer to do it nine out of 10 times a day a week is, is the Greg way, right? To call Greg and be like, Hey, bud, I need another rental property. And he sends me a list of 10 and I go that one. And then I just write a check for the down payment and move on. You know, the caveat there is, hey, we got to have the down payment. So if you have the money to invest, quote unquote, truly passively, which is like what JWB provides, that's that's the shtick because, you know, you're just putting your money somewhere to work for you. My father-in-law didn't have that luxury, right? As I said before, he might have had two grand in the bank. So, hey, how do I buy properties? And he's not going to be saving 30 grand or 40 grand a year to to put down payments on homes. So we had to get our hands dirty. And this is the not so passive way to invest in real estate, which we would go out and we would look for thrashed three and four unit family properties. I mean, I think the average renovation we did, we do on three units or four units is 70 to $85,000. So they're big units or big projects, but guess what? We're able to buy these things for a hundred grand, 150 grand. We put in 70,000 and then they're worth well over $300,000 when we're done. So we can do all of this work and then what's called the Burr strategy, buy, renovate, and then we refinance all of our cash out of it because of the value we've, we've created in the property. And then essentially we purchased and owned that home with no capital into it. So that's, that's how my father-in-law managed to build the portfolio that he has. The Burr method, man. The Burr method, Burr you got method. You know, the, a lot of folks will ask us at JWB, how did we get started? We started with that exact same process that John just talked yep. about. 